First thing to look at here is how loud is the kick. Without any effects, the kick is peaking at minus 9.2 dB. That means that I probably want to add some gain in the simpler itself. All right, without effects. This sounds pretty decent. The kick is really loud though, right? How about somewhere around here? Great, now let's add effects only getting the left side to make sure it's mono. Compression. Same thing, full in all fronts. Nice. You can hear it's clamping in towards the back end of the kick, and this is now gonna be towards the front. Too much towards the front. Very towards the front, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. So compression is a tonal decision, right? You're deciding what part of the sample you want to clamp down on, um, and what part you clamp on is going to bring out different tonal characteristics. So at the very beginning, you might find that it sounds very slappy and flappy, but towards the middle, it sounds rounded, more like a tone. And towards the end, it's like the back end of the kick and all the mechanical noise. Where in the sample you clamp down on actually matters. All right, moving forward. There's the beginning of that kick, right? Nice. Take out some of the mids. It's just deep low end and slappy front. This would depend on the key of the song. We don't have any keys yet, so. I'm actually gonna keep it very low so that we don't commit to like one note and only can use this in certain tracks. Into our bus. Too loud, right? So let's bring down the output of Cashmere into Diablo. I'm gonna take down the boost because again, we don't know the key. On kicks, I like hard clipping. Sounds dope. Let's check the input gain again. Two to zero, this is basically off. Somewhere there. Nice. I'm then going to decrease the gain to bring it back together. So let's resample this. All right, we've resampled this. If you check over here, the peak volume is minus 6.2. So we're going to make this actually minus 7, so it's quieter, uh, just to mess with your head. And then if I solo this track, let's listen to our drums without effects be louder than our drums with effects, just to mess with your head. So I hope you appreciate that. Um, I'm going to be honest, when I first started doing this stuff, that like really blew my mind. I was like, wait a second, loudness is actually perceived and that measured loudness is different. Like you can make things sound louder, but technically not be louder. And so how is it that producers are able to have these banging tracks that are like that much louder than mine? They're doing it using these like audio optical illusions, which I find fascinating. So just to recap really quick here, we used a bunch of hi-hats that were in a slicer. Then we ran them through some parallel compression. Next, we looked at snare processing. I brought out some of that like low tone by using an auto filter. We added a resonance bump and we also added some drive. I found that tone somewhere around 150 hertz and then I divided in half and then divided in half again. That way we would get the subharmonic. We also added snare buzz by Waves Factory, which adds some like brittleness and some breakup. It adds some rasp as if there's some snare wires beneath. We added some compression again. We added ozone imager for width. We added Cymatics Diablo, which is like a drum bus. This adds some snare processing, especially some soft clipping. And we also added an auto filter at the end. Keep in mind that Cymatics is a free version of Diablo. It's called Diablo Lite, and it comes with a few of the many features. I'm comparing them over here. It has punch and it has clip. So punch is up here, clip is over here. I liked the free one so much, I upgraded to the full thing. And I'm gonna be honest, I have yet to regret the purchase. So um, this one is free. You could probably get the same effect in this chain by just using the clip at the end and also driving some of the input. 
If you want to add some transient, add some punch here. Moving on to the kick, we have some input gain. Um, you could select left or right if it's a stereo kick, and then now it's mono. We have some kick compression again. We have cashmere essentials kick. This allows us to add some sub, some EQ, some transient shaping, some tape effects, some pressure to the back of the kick, some compression, and some width. A lot of these are kind of redundant though in our chain, and so we achieve these effects by using other plugins as well. Again, I have another instance of Cymatics Diablo, which we said is like kind of like tape saturation, kind of like a drum bus, kind of like a soft clipper. It's sort of a Swiss Army knife for all these different things. You could also look at it like it's distortion. Um, yeah, and so I dial in the kick differently than the snare. And I keep the kick and the snare independent of each other. At the very end, we have some volume attenuation, so we make sure it's not too loud. After all of this, I could run this into a master bus processor. I'm not going to show you it's on my master, it's a secret. Here's what it sounds like with the effects with no master. And then with master bus processing. Okay. Like, how do you process your drums? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you and have a great day.